Have you ever looked at those in charge and wondered how they managed to climb the corporate ladder so quickly? Or have you seen others bypass for promotion when you thought that they were perfect for the job? Well, in this video, I'll be using my experience of helping manage the careers of commercial specialists to give you insight into the experience you need on your CV to enable you to carve out a career path that will get you right to the top. Hi, it's Emily Gregson here at Signature Career Management where our passion is placing leading FMCG talent who transform the commercial performance of teams and organisations across the world. So if you're looking to boost the commercial performance of your business, be sure to hit subscribe, click the link in the description below to follow our LinkedIn company page and check out our website for up-to-date market insights, career advice, recruitment tips and general all-round good content. But without further ado, let's get started. Whether you're a highly intelligent graduate or someone with the gritty determination of Iron Man or woman, it can take more than just God-given talent to reach the higher echelons of leadership. However, as with a lot of things, you make your own luck in this world. So if you want to maximise your career potential, it pays to give ample consideration to planning out your career path. Because when it comes to that crucial point and you're relying on your CV to help you get a foot in the door, you'll need a resume that sings success if you want to separate yourself from the competition. So, considering how much a strong commercial CV can help towards getting you to the heady heights of sales or marketing director or beyond, I thought I'd highlight the key building blocks you need in your CV to give you every chance of getting to the top. Then, if you stick around until the end, I'll give you four quick tips for nailing an interview to drive home the hard work of your CV building and land the job of your dreams. So, without wasting any more time, let's get on with it. It's important if you want to reach the top that you can display a good depth of knowledge, but also be able to demonstrate that you know how to take a discipline to new heights by building a level of expertise within a particular area. So if you want to progress through the ranks, it's a good idea to build a CV that can tick both boxes. Consider commercial appointments, for instance. If you really want to show that you can add value at a senior level, it helps to have a work history that has touched on other aspects of the commercial spectrum. For example, a sales professional may have an appreciation of different categories or channels or other professions that fall under the commercial umbrella such as revenue growth or MSP, or alternatively have touched on commercially led marketing roles. Similarly, those who have taken a marketing route may have experience across wider elements of the marketing mix to underpin their broad depth of knowledge or have early career experience within a sales role. Building the wider understanding of the commercial function needs to be done in the right way though, without risking building a jumpy CV. So, for those that are working within larger blue chip businesses, they need to be looking at experiencing rotations across different disciplines, whereas those who are in smaller, more agile SMEs need to demonstrate that they've made the most of their time by getting involved in the wider elements of the business. If you're in a role that doesn't look like it's going to deliver the breadth of knowledge that's required to push your career forward, it's worth discussing with your manager how it can evolve or potentially look at other opportunities that can provide it. Generally, the experience of wider functions of a business should be gained during the early stages of a career before this is narrowed down to build a level of expertise within a certain function. Follow this path and you'll be on your way to building a CV that draws the attention of hiring managers when you're applying for jobs that are really able to propel your career forward. There's no doubt that raw ability is fairly important in the early stages of a career, but it becomes crucial very quickly to be able to demonstrate initiative if you want to be able to sustain consistent career progression. This is because as you climb the corporate ladder and transition to becoming the decision maker rather than the decision enactor, there is less hand-holding and a greater need for a self-starter mentality. It's therefore imperative that your CV can demonstrate that you have an ambitious nature that doesn't rely on others to propel you forward. To do this, it's crucial that during the early stages of your career, where there is less of a necessity to drive your own progress, you can exhibit the initiative of someone who places a high value on self-improvement and has the drive to go out and seek it. 
A good degree from a top university will only go so far as potential employers will want to know that this will translate into the drive to succeed in the business world. Subsequently, it's important to back up any academic achievements with evidenced continual professional development to validate an ingrained desire to improve. A very good potential route to demonstrate this is through seeking out mentors to help guide career development and support additional growth, whether that's via someone in your business, through someone you know, or via a good recruiter or career manager like myself. Taking it upon yourself to find the support to propel progression doesn't just provide you with the insight that a mentor can offer, but demonstrates to a prospective employer that you are ambitious for progression and improvement and keen to learn. You hear a lot about candidates being on the upward curve, which may sound a bit cliche, but what recruiters mean by that is that their candidate can demonstrate sustained progression throughout their career to date. This type of profile is desirable to hiring organisations as it provides an opportunity for them to benefit from the value that is added as a candidate develops along their current trajectory. Being able to evidence continual progression on a CV therefore adds to your attractiveness as a proposition. Now what this shouldn't be mistaken for is someone who has jumped from job to job in search promotions. And in fact, an excessively jumpy CV can have alarm bells ringing for some employers who may see you as a flight risk, which will certainly work against you. To clarify what I mean by a progressive CV though, it's one that doesn't show periods of stagnation where it may seem like a candidate has become complacent and settled for what some might perceive as an easy life. Whether that be a sideward step into a new business without any additional challenges or prolonged periods of time within the same business devoid of any significant changes to their role. In terms of commercial roles, most companies would like to see that a candidate has seen through a couple of cycles in each role before moving on to demonstrate that they have gained a good level of insight and experience from their time spent in the job. However, any more than four or five cycles may seem like progression has stalled, which could indicate that a candidate has reached their peak. The key to this, and what is important for the candidate to understand, as well as anyone who is representing them, is that there needs to be a plausible reason behind the decisions that have been made throughout the course of a career. If there are a couple of moves in quick succession, a prospective employer will likely want to know why. Similarly, if a candidate has spent a protracted period of time in the same position, how are they still able to grow during this time? The archetypal progressive CV with career moves that have been well thought out is one that doesn't require much explaining and speaks for itself. There's a danger that when you're developing a progressive CV, that you can become fixated on evidencing your more tangible skills and experience to set you apart from the crowd. However, it's imperative that no matter how strong your demonstrable background is, you don't forget to highlight how your inherent attitude and behaviours underpin all of your achievements. Skills can be taught and achievements can follow, but a candidate's attitude and behaviours are like a cultural fingerprint that makes them unique to other candidates. Similarly to a fingerprint, they're also indelibly ingrained, so certainly shouldn't be relegated to a few token lines at the end of a CV. Like I previously mentioned, employers often like to see a self-starter mentality and a desire to meet challenges head on. But this is not always the case and it's important that you read the room because each potential job opening has its own set of trials and tribulations. So it's important to tailor your CV to speak to the one at hand, which is why it's critical that it's adapted to suit the role it's being submitted for. This is where the representation of a quality recruiter can pay dividends because there's no point having a CV that screams about you being a dynamic blue sky thinker when the hiring organisation is after a safe pair of hands. Find out which attitudes and behaviours are important to the hiring managers and if there's one thing that you amend on your CV when submitting it for a role, make sure it's an overview of your softer skills so that they speak to the interviewer. This should provide an opportunity to direct the conversation towards the attributes that you intrinsically possess, which make you the perfect candidate for the job. 
Displaying the right attitudes and behaviours under the scrutiny of an interview is important if you want to secure a top level job. But often if you're wanting to get past the initial screening process for a job application, it's important that your CV can demonstrate some of the more tangible elements of career development that highlight you as a suitable candidate. One of the important aspects of a candidate's history that hiring managers hold in high regard is classical training. This is even more important if you're looking to move to a smaller size business as it demonstrates that you have an understanding for processes and procedures which enable you to really add value as a new hire. The classical training that many blue chips provide is universally recognised as going into granular detail about best practice and how this can be applied which can be particularly appealing to a lot of businesses especially less established businesses that are looking to bolster their own processes. Alternatively, classical training may consist of a relevant degree where there are opportunities for modules within your course to be put into practice and in many cases have been expanded upon through placements or internships. Degrees and blue chips aren't the only place to gain classical training though. There are opportunities at smaller businesses and scale-ups where due to the intimate nature of them, it's possible to work closely with the owners or peers with great experience and really glean some classical mentorship from them. The key to classical training is to take a proactive approach to making the most of every opportunity available to you and being able to demonstrate this in your CV to make you an appealing proposition to your next potential employer. So, there's my guide for building a commercial CV that will help you get to the top. If yours isn't quite on track though, don't beat yourself up about it. Many businesses like to see how you react in adversity, so if everything runs smoothly all of the time, you might be missing some of the experience that some potential employers hold in high regard. Like I mentioned at the start of the video though, you can't rely solely on your CV to get to the next rung of the ladder. The CV simply acts as a vehicle for getting your foot in the door and helps as a way of directing aspects of the interview. If you really want to maximise your career potential, it's important to perfect your interview technique as well. I always advise clients about incorporating greater objectivity to their assessment stages, but you'd be amazed at how many businesses still rely on opinion-based judgments and gut feel when assessing the suitability of candidates. So it's for this reason that I advise candidates to practice their interview style to ensure they're not pipped to the post by someone less qualified who has simply mastered the art of interviewing. So to summarise some of my top tips on interviewing, particularly for the more senior roles, I would advise the following. Refer to your achievements rather than the collective by using I instead of we, as this has been recognised in studies as a trait of high performers. When giving examples, don't just say what you've done, explain how you did it. Similarly, at a presentation stage, never just present what you do, always follow up with how you would do it. And finally, always be articulate, precise and to the point. And remember, this is far easier when you're fully prepared. Well, that's it for now. As ever, it'd be great to know what you think. Hit subscribe, share your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you follow our LinkedIn company page. And for those who haven't checked it out yet, we have a new resources page on our website, which you can find the link for in our bio and provide some really useful insight to give you an edge in the current challenging job space.